Hi there, I thought I'd make a uh, quick video just to uh, demonstrate the Yezu FT817 that I just bought. Um, I've got it set up here just on my desk in my office and I'll show you the uh, antenna setup uh, in, in a later portion of the video. just wanted to try and highlight uh, some of the features of the radio. Um, Yezu FT817 is a uh, compact HF 6 meter, 2 meter, and 440 radio, all in one nice sized box. Um, it's meant to be portable. They designed it with this strap, which actually you can you can kind of wear around your neck. It's even got a handy place here you can store the microphone um, when you're just carrying it around. I don't know how practical that particular application would be in the world of HF. There are certainly people that do that. Um, the antenna restrictions and the HF spectrum are somewhat prohibitive in terms of walking around with, with that sort of antenna. However, in VHF application for the 6 meter, uh, 2 meter, and 440, they provide this antenna which will interface onto the front of the radio. It's just a BNC connector, and it just twists on. And you can see that uh, that makes a fairly compact setup. Now here on the bottom of the radio, we actually have a battery compartment. And the battery compartment hold in, installed in this radio currently is a um, nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery pack. Um, that particular battery pack has, I believe, somewhere around 1400 milliamp hours of battery capacity and operates somewhere around 9 volts, give or take. Um, it's enough to power the radio at a reduced power setting from what the radio is capable of doing on a little bit uh, higher voltage set up uh, from an external battery or external power supply. But definitely uh, could get your signal out there on the air um, when you're out in, in very portable mode. Most people, I believe, probably will use this radio more in a desktop or tabletop or maybe picnic top type setting maybe on top of a mountain somewhere they're uh, activating a summit or taking a hike um, and probably isn't that much extra effort just to have a small gel cell battery with you this particular battery oh it probably weighs a couple of pounds it's uh, seven amp or four amp hour uh, sealed lead acid battery. You'll frequently see the abbreviations SLA battery or slab. Um, and these are very handy. This one is salvaged from our alarm system battery for our house alarm. Um, it needed replacing. It was thought to be at the end of its life, at least by the uh, the alarm system. So. I took it out, put a new one in, and just kept it around because I, I thought that it probably still had a little bit more useful life in it. It's been serving fine in this application. I've not done any analysis to see how far it'll go, but it's powered the radio for several days, at least for my modest needs. And right now that's what's powering the radio. And what I've got here is a little connection um, between the battery and a cable that Yesu actually provides when you purchase the radio. It plugs in to the back of the radio back here, right, right in that spot. So the main thing you want to do, the cable that Yesu actually provides with the radio, unfortunately, um, does not include any fuses. So be sure and place a couple of fuses both on the positive as well as the negative leads and try and get those located as close to the battery as possible for safety purposes. So that's what I've done here. And all of this is equipment that I had kind of laying around that um, was in a junk box 
from other projects, so it doesn't look incredibly great, but it functions well for me, uh, and it's it's going to be a fairly durable setup if I ever decide to take it to the field. Um, one of the other things that Yesu includes and is a very good idea is this little toroid, um, which you then wrap the power cord through and um, snap together. It just prevents a little bit of RF feedback from uh, exiting the radio, getting back into these lines. So, and I've just put a label on there to so I know what this particular cord power since we all end up with so many of these cables and cords in our lives. So that's the basic radio. I've got a couple of accessories that I've already installed on this just to make it a little bit nicer to use. One of which you may notice are these little feet. Um, and these simply just fold up like so. Um, they're, they make the radio much nicer to use. It's very difficult to see the display the way the radio comes if you just laid it down on, on a table. It, it's hard to crane your head down there and see what the uh, display is saying. So this just elevates and props up the radio. Much appreciated. I've also got this nice CW keyer here from Palm Radio. These are made in Germany. Um, just a real lightweight plastic box with the appropriate interface cable on it to uh, plug into the back of the radio for CW input for Morse code. Um, and this is going to use the internal keyer that's built into the radio. So just a handy, handy little thing. Very portable. Actually comes with a, a nice little form-fitting box that they've made. There's the instructions will fit inside and the, the keyer basically breaks down and you can also store the cable in there. So that's um, some of the extra features. Another thing that I've gone ahead and installed is this little cranker knob here. Um, the original knob that comes with the radio has a, a little bitty tuning dimple in it that is very difficult to use. This one you can actually grab a hold of or you can use your finger and, and kind of crank around in order to uh, change frequency. So very much appreciated having a nice little thing. And that's a real simple, um, easy to replace item. It doesn't alter anything on the radio itself. You can keep the original and, and put it right back to where where you got it. Just simply pull this little rubber sleeve off and take apart uh, set screw and, and slide the old tuning knob off and slide this one on in its place and replace the rubber. So it's really easy to do. Just a quick little, you know, 15-minute project that really makes the use of the radio a lot more enjoyable. So, one of the things when I was first getting started in HF radio that I really didn't consider very, very strongly was exactly what the antenna needs are, and the antenna needs for HF can be can be very simple or they can be very complex. So I'm going to take off the uh, VHF antenna here. And the HF antenna for the 817 plugs in back here with a traditional coax plug. So that's pretty simple. The rest of it gets a little bit more complicated. When you're talking about HF antennas, there really are not a lot of out-of-the-box solutions that that are easily implemented and work fabulously, though I think I've found a good compromise, at least for my particular purposes. And there are certainly a myriad of other ideas out there, but I'll share that my antenna set up later on in the video. This is a great book. If you want to investigate some of the other alternatives, this book I got uh, from a ham radio shop. It was unfortunately water damaged, but that made it a little bit cheaper, which is nice. Um, but in the book, they go through a lot of different ideas for antennas and tuners and various setups that are low profile. And that's really what I found fits well. I'm not in a restricted uh, development or anything like that. I could put up a tower. I could have huge antennas. But 
I like to do my ham radio operation wherever I happen to be, if it's at home, um, if I'm camping, if I'm backpacking, um, wherever I am, you know, I, I like to have the radio with me and I like to be capable of quickly putting up an antenna and getting a signal out on the air. So this is a, a recommended book.